Okay, everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today, I just wanted to do a quick video on <clears throat> debugging SIP messages in a Cisco call manager environment, uh, how to collect the SIP messages and the programs available to you to help make your life easier in, uh, in analyzing these messages um, and interpreting them and helping you ultimately, hopefully, uh, resolving some issues. So it's not a very difficult thing to do. Uh, there's just a few different ways you can do it. Um, this is how I do it. Uh, so as always, that little disclaimer has to be said. There's multiple ways to do things, uh, especially as a voice engineer, network engineer, etc. You're going to find that some people do things certain ways that works best for them. And uh, other people, you know, may tweak the process a little bit. So uh, with that being said, we are going to dive into capturing our first SIP message uh, or our, our first SIP debug set of messages. Um, and then I'm going to show you the tool that uh, is my go-to uh, to interpret them. And then from there, we'll go over the other two methods. So just to, uh, to kind of kick off the video, um, the first method that we are going to use involves um, capturing messages uh, debugs at the router. So this is my cube uh, for my test lab. And I'm gonna get this out of here. So this is my cube for my test lab. First we are going to prepare the, uh, the router to, uh, to uh, look for debugs. So um, we're gonna do debug. Well first we're going to do uh, you all. That clears off all debugs. You don't want unnecessary debugs running. Um, it kind of muddies the waters. Um, and then you also want to check your um, you also want to check your processes before you run any debugs, just to make sure that your router is not gonna um, kind of uh, go into an unplanned reboot <laughs> and crash, so to speak. So yeah, always check your processes and probably run your debugs um, if you can during an off hours in a production environment. This is a lab. This is not gonna impact anything. So. I'm going to run debug csip messages. So this is going to be the go-to debug that you want to run. Um, and uh, this will probably be recommended to you if you open a TAC case. This is going to be the debug uh, nine times out of ten that, that they're going to include um, in their little uh, set of instructions that they want you to do. So uh, debug csip messages. Boom. And we're going to make sure that it's locked and loaded. And it is. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to clear the log because I have my router set up to um, not display messages uh, via the debug state, like through the monitor, like in real time. They're just going to all get sent to the log uh, buffer on the router. And then I'm going to show you how to get them from the log buffer on the router um, to your translator X program or your, your text document. You can also do this, um, just send your log file right to a syslog server. That's probably the recommended and the most professional way to do it, but this is how I do it and it works for me uh, in my use cases. So we want to make sure the log's clear uh, and there's no residual logs in there that's going to kind of muddy the waters. And now we have to, now we want to make a test call. So I'm just going to call a test number real quick. You are about to enter an echo test. In this mode, everything you say will be... Okay. I'm going to hold. Just... The purpose of this... All right. Now I'm going to end the call. Okay. So that call is ended. And now we can you all. We can turn off the debugging because we're not capturing anything else. Go up. Right click on the putty session. Go to change settings. Session. Logging. Printable output. Browse. And we're going to say we want to dump it to my desktop in this case. We're going to rename it SIP Debug 10 for 2021-3. So it's the third debug I captured today. Apply. And now we want to essentially print the whatever we just stored in the logging buffer. We want to print um, to that text document that's loaded on our desktop now. So we just do show log. And these are all the messages that just occurred for that one call. All the SIP messages. And what happened is they have just been loaded into this text document right here. So to get them into Translator X, we open up Translator X. And now we can just drag this file into Translator X. And it's going to display all these messages. 
All right? So right now, you know what these messages are. They look familiar. It's just not very helpful, right? How is this helpful, uh, more helpful than a text document is, is kind of what you're thinking right now, right? Well, the real beauty of Translator X um, lies in going to the call list, selecting your call that I just made. It's from this number to this number. Um, and then you want to generate the filter. Come back to this main screen right here. Now that we have a filter generated, you can do generate diagram. Now this is where you will make your bread and butter as a voice engineer. Uh, analyzing these SIP ladder traces and figuring out uh, where the issue is and uh, who's responsible for fixing it. So you have a nice uh, representational kind of flow here. You can see that, okay, I made an outbound call. Here is my initial invite from, this is, uh, it'll even give you IPs, right, to help you keep everything straight. This, you can say, this is my CCM. Okay, this is my cube. Boom, and this is my ITSP. So now we can see very easily the cube's in the middle of this communication. Invite to the cube. The cube's going to take it. It has early offer forced on it. That's why now we have an SDP in this invite. Uh, ITSP is going to say, eh, you're not you know, allowed to do this. And then we're going to come back and say, okay, no, actually we are. Here's my authorization stuff. And they're going to say, okay, that's fine. Uh, here we come back, send receive, two-way audio. Uh, here we go, boom, boom, boom. Um, and as you can see, we can just interpret this uh, call. So if there's an issue, you can uh, copy and paste maybe this, uh, this ladder diagram to your ITSP and say, here I think is where the issue is. Um, you know, maybe you can do this to fix it, or maybe I can try this to fix it, uh, etc. So it's just an easier way to troubleshoot things, um, SIP in particular, um, without relying on going through a text document and uh, and kind of just racking your brain to figure out the direction of a message or you know the order of a message, etc. So that is the first method that I use, and it involves um, pulling debugs right from the cube and then um, throwing them into the translator X uh, to interpret them. So uh, that's probably my most preferred way. So moving on to the second way to capture SIP messages. Okay, so the second way that I would uh, capture some SIP messages uh, is through the real-time monitoring uh, tool, RTMT, as it's uh, affectionately referred to. And basically, if you haven't logged into this before, um, you just enter in the, uh, the IP address of your publisher. And uh, from there, you can enter in the, the username and password. Hopefully, it prompts me. Okay, so it's going to prompt you for your credentials. Okay, so once you have RTMT loaded up, you can just select the default configuration. That's not too crucial. But the, uh, the place where we're going to look is under voice and video in this left pane. <laughs> And then we're going to go to session trace log view real time data. And sometimes this takes a little bit to load, so you just have to be patient. Um, yeah, there's nothing else I can say about that. It, it takes a unnecessarily long time sometimes, so uh, just be kind of cognizant of that. All right, so once that's done loading, um, you're going to be presented with a list of calls, uh, SIP calls in your environment. And the one particular call that I just uh, showcased using Translator X is going to be uh, shown here. So you'll see the date and the time, the calling DN and the, uh, the call DN. And you can actually see what the device, the device name, the call manager device name here, and uh, what trunk or what device it ultimately um, traversed. And if you double click on this, you will get another similar ladder trace. So this is the ladder trace from the device's point of view. So that's the, the distinction here. The previous example, the cube debug and ladder trace that I showed you, it just showed you from the call manager to the cube to the ITSP. Here, you're gonna see from the phone, the endpoint to the call manager to the cube. 
Um, so it's a bit of a different perspective and you may need to consult this one depending on what the issue is as opposed to the other cube debug or maybe you can use them together if you're troubleshooting an issue and then that will be helpful. So I just wanted to show you the other method of capturing uh, a SIP message from the endpoints point of view. And as you can see, um, you can, it's not as um, responsive as Translator X. So if you click on this, like I just clicked on the invite because I wanted to see the actual contents of the invite and I just have a spinning wheel for a couple seconds, but ultimately you're gonna get um, the same uh, presentation, right? The same familiar SIP uh, message view. You're gonna see your, uh, your STP, you're gonna see all your codecs that you have, um, your DTMF, etc. Um, then you're gonna even see some, some other log files. I think these are actual call manager um, log files that may be helpful to you. So that is, um, like I said, just one way or another method to, uh, to view uh, SIP messages. And as you can see, it also uh, kind of breaks it down in this little easy to follow diagram so you don't have to strain yourself and figure out the, uh, the orientation uh, of a message and things like that. So that's kind of helpful. I don't use this as much as the cube debugs but um, you know, it's there in case you need it. So along with uh, plenty of other monitoring uh, tools you can use with this program. So uh, this is the pretty much the primary purpose I use RTMT, um, but I'm sure there's hundreds of other things uh, you could do within this program. So I just wanted to show you that uh, second method of gathering SIP mess. Okay, so the third method um, for gathering SIP messages and analyzing them is a method that uh, I'm going to be honest I've only used uh, a couple times in my production environment um, and one was to troubleshoot a fax issue, a SIP fax issue um, and it's, uh, it's pretty useful and it's pretty well known um, it's Wireshark so a lot of people probably wouldn't associate Wireshark with uh, telephony um, debugs but I mean, at the end of the day, it's voice over IP, so why not uh, try and use Wireshark? It's helped network engineers, <laughs> you know, for for uh, you know decades. Um, it's also helpful to a voice engineer if you want to use it like that. So I'm going to just go through an example real quick and show you the very basics of how uh, I navigate this program. It's a very robust program. You can do filters. You can do all kinds of things. Uh, I'm not going to get into it because I will not be the uh, expert on that. There are whole series on Udemy, LinkedIn, YouTube for just Wireshark. Um, so it's a very powerful tool. But for my purpose, I just know how to capture data and then go into the telephony settings and kind of view the uh, the ladder trace and, and view the actual packets um, that contain SIP. So that is what I am going to show you as the third method for collecting SIP messages. So what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to make sure that uh, I'm just capturing traffic on all these interfaces. It may not be as complicated or as convoluted as this um, in your environment. For example, if you have a server, it's just going to have one physical NIC uh, for the most part. But in my, on this computer, I have a lot of virtual NICs, and I'm not 100% not sure what traffic is supposed to be passed on which NIC because it's kind of a little complicated. Um, so I'm just going to capture traffic on every single interface, um, and then uh, and we'll go from there. So I want to capture, and then I'm going to make a call. You are about to enter an echo test. In this mode, everything you say... Okay, we're going to end it, and we're going to stop the capture. So we just captured all network traffic on every single interface. Um, and what we want to do now is go up to telephony, VoIP calls. And as you can see, we have uh, several instances of VoIP calls. And we're going to say... Okay, we want this call right here, um, flow sequence. And you will see something, a ladder diagram, very similar to the Translator X diagram or the RTMT diagram. You're going to have timestamps, um, and you are going to see uh, invite. And I think you can go to, let's see here. So if you click on this packet, 
it's going to show you, like in the diagram, it's going to show you the packet for the actual um, capture. So this is um, my initial invite from the cube to the ITSP. Um, and I'm going to click on that, and that's what this one is. So you can click on it and expand it, and it's going to see the message header, um, all this stuff. You're going to see the message body, which has the SDP in it. Um, and then you can go through and look at the SDP. So it's not probably as user friendly, I would say, as Translator X because um, just like the interfaces are a little bit more clunky because it's not necessarily streamlined for SIP troubleshooting, but it is available. It will give you the same information presented almost in the same manner um, as Translator X and it will it's in some instances it may be more efficient to use this like you said it, uh, the way i did it is i captured traffic right from a uh, a fax server a sip fax server so that was very helpful i didn't have to do any other programs i just went into the fax server started wireshark captured the traffic you know test fax whatever went in, stopped it, and then I can look at it this way and I could see maybe like T38 wasn't negotiating properly or, or something like that. Um, so that is Wireshark, um, how to capture SIP traffic and analyze it. Like I said, you could go in here and mess with a lot of stuff, um, a lot of uh, filters and things like that, but for the most part, I'm a Wireshark novice, so um, there may be other ways to do this. And, uh, and and get the most out of Wireshark, but this is how I do it, and it's um, you know it does what it needs to do uh, for for my purpose. So yeah, so that is the three ways to capture SIP messages um, via Translator X, RTMT, and Wireshark. So I hope you learned something in this video. If you have any other questions or if you run into issues with this, just drop a comment down below. I'll try my best to monitor them and respond as prompt as possible. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the next video.